I don't want a lot for Christmas. There's just one thing I need. I don't really care about the presents underneath the Christmas tree. I just want some Barnacle Inspiration series, and I'm sure you do too, so that is what you shall receive. So in case you didn't watch the previous video, we're doing a little fun thing called Abysmus Christmas. We're going to be doing every Tuesday of December some fan submitted mocks episodes as a present for you. So if you submitted stuff, it's your gift. It'll be on the show if it's one of those 50 that get picked across the 10 mocks that'll be in each of those episodes. So without further ado, you got it. You get it. Good. Let's move on and let's cover our first fan submitted mock. So the first mock that we've got today is Ume by Bobby Betskeman. So right off the bat, this mark has an awesome custom mask. It is a Shapeways mask. We love our dudes over on the Shapeways there. You can always 3D print some Bionicle masks. You can just straight up buy them. Uh, there's actually a link in the link to this mock in the description. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out because there's some really, really cool stuff you can buy. Or if you've got a 3D printer, you could always look into making some 3D custom masks, because why not? Masks are such a pivotal thing for Bionicle. You may as well uh, make some of your own, if that's the route you want to go down. I think it's a really cool choice of color in this mock, by the way. I love the pop of red uh, on the back there of this mock, but just the kind of monotone gray of this mock. It has little hints of blue here and there, but there's a lot of gray used here. And I kind of realized, like, most of the time you see gray on a Bionicle mock. It's not always gray. It's more the silver you see with Bionicle. Gray... Ironically, wasn't that common of a color in Bionicle. Like, it was on little technique bits and stuff, but it was more primarily silver, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's just really interesting seeing a very primarily gray mock like this. This gray used on a humanoid figure like this and in such a larger quantity and it being the primary color, essentially, of this mock, it kind of really, at least to me, gives off this interesting kind of, like, military drone look, some sort of, like, kind of prototype look to it. This really, like, yeah, stark grey colour scheme is really kind of serious and, and almost refined to some degree. I don't quite know how to word it, but it gives off this really distinct look to me, and I like that. And I think it's a great example of just using colours that aren't as common in the Bionicle colour palette. You know, a lot of system stuff has been used here for, for this grey here, uh, and it works well. So, you know, by all means, play around with some of those colours that are less common, uh, and you know, some of those colours might surprise you too, uh, just like a clickbait video. Uh, number 10 will surprise you. Well, the colour grey will surprise you even more. Uh, it's it just, I uh, know, it surprised me at least. You might be looking at it and being like, Cassie, I've seen so many grey mocks. What are you talking about? But I don't know. For some reason, this surprised me. And maybe, maybe it's the the Christmas eggnog that's 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 ruining my brain. But who knows? But that, that, that looks cool to me. I like this grey colour scheme. Even if it has been used a lot, I think it's cool. One other thing I think is really cool on this mock is taking a look at the torso, kind of where the heart light is in the middle there, there's this really interesting texture just above where the waist articulation is. Now that piece, uh, you actually see it on a mock a little bit later in the episodes off, but it's this interesting circle piece that has this funky kind of rimmed ridge texture to it. And just seeing it implanted there alongside a few other little greeble details, it's just really nice. It's a really interesting texture to it. And that's always something I recommend doing. Just kind of study the textures on pieces and go like, actually, that's really cool. I'm going to put that in the mock here and, and just see how it looks. Because I think there's little subtle details in that one specific piece there. Well, it's technically two of them put together. It does a lot. And it's just a really unique and distinct texture. It's very, very cool. So yeah, a lot to love about this mock here. Some really, really cool stuff going on, some unique stuff going on. Really, really nice work there. Let us move on to the next mock, which is Vector by Braylon Turner. So in the email, which I don't have in front of me, so I'm paraphrasing here, he said that he entered this into the sci-fi competition. And I think there is a really distinct sci-fi vibe to this mock. I really, really like that. There's some really awesome striking colors, you know, and a lot of sort of sci-fi things. You do see some pretty bold and out there color schemes and some pretty bold and out there you know, costumes and all sorts of things. I think this mock has a lot of those things used on it. They're really, really bright popping. I always get my friend's colors confused. Like it's pink, but I think it's like magenta or like bright magenta or dark magenta or like dark purple it's not dark purple look someone correct me because i don't know those friends colors man sometimes there's a lot of different friends colors with confusing names but regardless this bright pop of i'm just gonna say it's a bright pink 
looks great up against the black here and it's beautifully contrasted with a couple different shades of trans blue and i think that's a very strong kind of sci-fi color scheme it's bold it's out there and it's kind of sleek and sort of space-like so it, it is in evoking a sense of the future and a sense of other worlds and space it's really really cool and it's just from using some cool colors that's the power of a good color scheme it's really awesome I also like the head design on this, kind of looks a little bit like some sort of uh, astronaut helmet or just some sort of interesting breathing apparatus, kind of evokes a little bit of Star Wars or a little bit of some sort of crazy sci-fi movie or something like that. Uh, I, I, I quite like that, and it's just simply Gully Mutter's mask flipped like that. Always good to flip a mask, it can really, really convey some cool stuff there. Um, really, really interesting head design there that, uh, yeah, really evokes the look that he was going for. So, yeah, good job. Two other things as well, the weapons that this mock's got. Uh, one's this awesome staff which uses uh, kind of one of these uh, ribbed tubing pieces here on this sort of a longer kind of staff, uh, which uses a bunch of different pieces to just kind of get a bit of length on it there. Again, interesting kind of sci-fi look to it. it. It essentially just looks like a, a sort of large cane or a stick or a quarter staff or something, but just this uh, purple hose piece, whatever you want to call it on the end there, it, it kind of looks like it might hurt a little bit or it's maybe can, it could electrify itself or it's got some sort of interesting properties to it that, you know, again, fit with the sci-fi vibe. Uh, so I like that again, taking something that's actually quite simple, this staff here, but just little subtle additions with the color and the, the texture on it. it make you kind of start to paint a bit of a picture and uh, imagine what it could do and you know in the sci-fi worlds and uh, universes there's always that crazy weird stuff that you go like oh that's cool and uh, i feel like that weapon is uh, evoking elements of that so i really like it yeah a lot to love about this mock here really uh, really nailing that sci-fi look here the next mock we've got here is by Sentrax studios and is called payora so one thing that's a little hard to see in these pictures but i think it's really interesting Taking a look at the feet on this mock, there's kind of this interesting spring texture to them, and I believe that it's one of these funky kind of piston spring pieces that come in some Technic sets. That's a really cool addition there, especially putting them on the feet kind of gives me this impression that uh, he's a good jumper, you know, he's got some uh, suspension and pistons in his legs there that uh, help him, you know, run really fast and jump really high and stuff like that, and, you know, just naturally the fact that there is an actual spring on that part there. Uh, is a really great way of uh, communicating that. It works really well. It's a really nice use of pieces there and a clever place to put them as well because it starts to paint a bit of a picture of his abilities, which I like that a lot. And yeah, we've seen the pistons on the lower you know, parts of the body here and then we see them again on the waist here. And I like it. I, I like how these two sort of strong pistons are holding up the waist and then nicely in front of it is this sort of strong bit of body armor on the front. Uh, just looks really nice, looks quite robotic, the idea that these sort of two strong pistons are, you know, kind of commanding and holding up the rest of the, uh, you know, the shoulders and the body there, uh, and then the arm is just nicely placed on top there, kind of, uh, to some degree there's some nice uh, colour blocking there, of course, you know, you've got the white on top and the reds and the greys underneath that. And it just looks quite nice. It really fits with the Bionicle aesthetic, in my opinion. I always come back to that. I always talk about how that dual piston thing there is so reminiscent of the Toa Mata. And it really dives into just the aesthetic that is so Bionicle to me. You know, I'm sure others had a, a different entry point into Bionicle. Of course, the Toa Mata was my entry point. Uh, you know, maybe you, you came in with the, the Baraki. And so to you, Bionicle is a lot more centered on the aesthetics of the Baraki, you know. But whenever I see that sort of dual piston torso design like that, I just immediately think of Bionicle. And I always I always think that's so just beautiful to see that. And again, that's my opinion. You might look at that and go like, yeah, it's cool, but I far prefer something a bit different. And that's okay. You're, you're allowed to. That's just my personal opinion. And uh, I'm just looking into why I think that of the fact that it, uh, it hits right in the nostalgia. You know, it hits right into what I view as quintessentially Bionicle. And it's cool, it's great to see that there, and I just think it's a great way too to, to get a bit of articulation in the torso, because there is the ball joint there, so you do get a bit of swivel there. And you also get these two really strong beams that can kind of hold up the rest of the body, so just in terms of actually just having a really strong structural mock that's not going to kind of fall apart and can hold itself up, it is actually also a pretty clever and unique and smart design. 
So uh, a lot to love about it. I still like these two spikes on the back of this mock here. One, it just looks cool, but combining it with the pistons, how I said there's kind of this sense that he's really fast or can jump really high. These two kind of strong lines coming out of his back kind of almost look a bit like speed lines, you know, like when you see the Flash or Quicksilver running super fast and they have this like streak of energy behind them as they just dart forward and it gives this wonderful sense of motion on, the, on a comic book page, even though, you know, there's no actual movement, but uh, you get the sense that they're moving. I know these two streaks coming out of his back these two spikes there kind of implies this sense of movement for me this is sense of speed I quite like that it looks uh, it's it's a nice little addition like one it just looks aesthetically cool but two it's it's communicating a bit of character here and whether or not that was intentional or not who cares it still works it still looks cool also of course these pictures were taken outside you know can communicate a little bit about the character a little bit about their story where they where they live the world that they're in but also too like that's always my advice because people sometimes are like hey ben how do i take a good picture you know i'd like go outside and like natural sunlight is always going to complement your mark like the worst thing you can do is is uh, take a picture in a really dim lit room where you, you just can't see anything you know is that by the way is that something you guys would want would you would you would you be opposed to a little behind the build video or something about how to photograph a mock that might be interesting um yeah put a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of an interest out just see if if, uh, if people are interested in that if you want to see it let me know i wouldn't be opposed to doing something like that besides the point though really awesome mock the next mock we've got here is called your demon and is by abu zimka so i like this because it's kind of just a creepy death ball which is fun <laughs> i like that it's a really interesting aesthetic. It's very different. It's very out there. It's not necessarily something you see every day. Just the beautiful, strong contrast of this really piercing red eye, this translucent red eye on a sea of white is very, very nice. I also like the fact that texturally, almost everything on this is a spike or a tentacle. There's a very kind of rough, rugged look to it with these, uh, you know, these sort of fur pieces that here look a bit more like spikes you know they were used on like chima sets as like fur for an eagle or a wolf or something but they look so spiky and sinister here there's this real sinister quality to this mark and yeah it's really 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 nice it's, it's a really beautiful way of playing with textures i still love the bend of these two longer tentacles that kind of almost could be kind of little arms or something just the way that uh, you know you could argue it's an illegal technique uh, where uh, you kind of connect these two slightly larger uh, claw pieces here onto the Hero Factory bad guy robot arms and then connect it again onto these different tentacles like that. It's a nice little way of just sort of rounding off the tentacle and almost looking like he's got little fingers or little pincers on the end of those tentacles. It looks like he's about to grab you or something like that. Or he's kind of leaning forward, ready to strike or something like that. Yeah, it's, uh, it, just, it just looks cool. And I don't know, I just like that nice organic curve back that they've got. Just looks nice. So I also want to talk a little bit about reverse engineering here. Because when, when, when this mock was submitted, I looked at it and I went, how did he do that? How did he make this really beautiful like sphere with all of those different fur spiky pieces? And so the art of reverse engineering is something I've spoken about briefly in the past. And it's, it's something I want to cover more. So we'll talk about it now. Um, I think it's such a valuable tool is to, to, to look at mocks and attempt to reverse engineer it. Like study the pictures enough and go, okay, what, what am I seeing? What pieces can I identify? How are they connecting? And how can I then replicate that myself? And then actually attempt to build it yourself or build elements of it yourself, whether you completely recreate the entire mock or just take elements of it and just attempt to understand it more by actually physically building it. And so I was studying it and I went, okay, well, I can see that he's got this sort of, I call it an octo brick, I guess, because, well, well, first off, you see where the red eye piece is. The piece behind that, that has these different kind of bars on it, there's eight of those little bars. Uh, so that's a system piece that's got four studs on it. And then it's got all these different uh, little clip bits on the end there. Or not clip bits, little like uh, lightsaber rod connections all around it, all eight of them. And so I thought, oh, clearly they'd be connected to that. But the more I zoom in on the picture, I realize there's nothing actually clipped to that part. It's just there because it's just there. So the only other way that you could connect that is through the studs on the opposite side of it. So clearly there's something else going on. And so I go, okay, so he's using system pieces, right? Because there's studs on the other end of that piece. So maybe he's using a series of individual pieces that, you know, that are system pieces because they've got the studs. So going out a bit further, he's probably building this longer sort of beam that has multiple connection points on it that he can then connect all these individual pieces to. It's probably this really kind of complicated, interesting lattice, or maybe there's 
further more octo pieces sort of further down the line and uh, those lightsaber clips all eight of them are actually connected to other clips that create a little bit of an angle so that you can put all those first spike pieces on them i don't know how clear i'm being right now but more or less i hope that you understand or, or at least kind of gathering the process that i'm going through here of studying the picture and going okay well i can't actually see the specific way that's connected well i know that this piece has this specific connection point on it so you probably need to use this kind of piece to connect that to it and kind of just studying pictures like this is a very difficult example like i still don't know how he's done it but at least understanding that art and taking it into your own practice because you can so easily grow from it just by studying pictures and attempting to figure out how they did it and then you'll just learn more techniques like some of these instruction videos i've been putting up a lot of people were commenting and saying like i don't have those pieces i you know i guess i can't do anything then and i would i replied to pretty much everyone and i said like we'll study the techniques see what pieces are being used see what see how it's being done see the ways that these pieces are being used am i using pieces that you have that you've gone oh i never thought you would use that for an arm or a leg or a head or whatever like wow oh, i hadn't even thought of that you know it, it's about seeing how you can use a piece in a totally new way or understanding a new technique or understanding a new perspective or just studying the way that pieces work like the pieces is what makes the mock so the more you know about them and the more ways that you see them being used the more you're going to be able to use them, right? I'm going on a bit of a tangent here, but I'm hoping a lot of it makes sense, and I'm hoping that you can go further down the path of reverse engineering, because it can it can help you if you, if you use it uh, in many ways. That's quite honestly how I got a lot of my learning through building, was just from reverse engineering. But enough of this tangent. This is a really sick mock. There's a lot we can learn from it, and there's a lot we can learn from reverse engineering, and I'll cover that well, we'll put a little pin in reverse engineering for now. I'll talk about it a little bit later on another mock here as well. But let's move on to the next mock. The next mock is Bounty Hunter by Night Warrior. So I like the kind of mishmash colors of this armor. You know, it's not necessarily the case of it's a little bit of yellow and blue and purple and all these sort of brightly contrasting colors that don't really work well together. The armor style of this and the colors used kind of remind me of The Mandalorian, which... I'm sorry, I'm obsessed with that show right now. Of course I'm going to reference it. It's kind of like this cobbled together armor design that, um, you know, if you're speculating like I was when The Mandalorian came out. By the way, I'm not going to spoil it. I know that The Mandalorian hasn't come out for some people in uh, until like March or something ridiculous. So no spoilers here, I promise. Um, but this was just straight up speculation that I thought of even before the show came out. I don't even know if this is confirmed, but if you look at elements of his armor, uh, there's little bits of armor from like a shore trooper from Rogue One, like a, a scarif trooper, a shore trooper, whatever you want to call them. Uh, you know, some of his armor is brown and some of it's more of a, like a tan. It looks a little bit more cobbled together and, you know, taken from a, a couple different places and stuff like that. And I think this mock has a very similar aesthetic to that, that he's sort of constantly upgrading his armor or, you know, it, it gets damaged, so he replaces it with something else from, you know, some armor he found or a dude that he killed. And he goes, yeah, I'm actually going to take that. This is better than the one I've got, you know. So I like the cobbled together look that it's got. But the fact that a lot of all the colors are very sort of dark and dull, there's nothing that really seems that out of place. Like even kind of the blue on his wrist there, that doesn't necessarily seem out of place because it can kind of make sense, you know. He's kind of painted his, uh, his little wrist comb or something or, you know, he got this armor off of uh, some random dude who had blue armor, and it's, it's just in one place there, so it's not too distracting, you know. Things do seem like they belong, and it, it has this kind of cobbled-together look to it, but it's a little bit more deliberate. Another thing I like, the printing on the leg armor here. I know that wasn't something he did, like the, the Shore Trooper, Scarif Trooper, CCBS Star Wars set, they just have printing on the leg armor there. But there's some very nice leg armor printing, and it works really well on this mock just i was I, I had forgotten that that part was printed on the set and it looks really really cool so <laughs> i'm gonna get me a scarif trooper set and i'm gonna build it because they're awesome those scarif troopers and i'm gonna put it on a mock because this is, this, is, this, is, this is getting my creative juices flowing just because it's a good piece another thing too i really love the idea that this mock has this like attachable jetpack thing uh, he, he sort of said and i'm paraphrasing here he said in the the submission email he said uh he just kind of made this sort of cobbled together uh, jetpack just from pieces he had lying around. And it's like, yeah, he's got this sort of jetpack that goes on his back or it comes in his little like drivey drone thing. I'm like, that's awesome. That's a really clever, cool idea. 
Um, and of course, if you've got a bunch of random system pieces lying around, yeah, see what you can make with them. Can you make a cool jetpack for your mock? It might work well. Yeah, super, super cool. There's a lot of nice, uh, nice stuff going on on this mock here. I really, really like it. On to the next mock here. This is Gregory the Dinosaur by Aiden Builds. Now, I love this. It's goofy. It's cute. It's adorable. Love a good cute, 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 I love a good cutey mock. Cute and adorable and fluffy. All three of the words in one. Really, really nice, this guy. Really great part use using the Ben 10 torso piece here as this dinosaur head. Adding these little buck teeth under it, the cute googly eyes. The repeated slicer feet for the neck there. Those pieces flow very nicely into each other. Uh, into each other, I'm referring to the Ben 10 torso piece and the slicer feet there. Just repeating those and flowing it into each other. Really, really nice kind of consistent textures between those two pieces. It's really cool. He's got his cute little posable toes here as well. That's also great. And I'm going to go back to that reverse engineering conversation here. So let's take a look at these toes and go, okay, how did he build it? So obviously he's just simply connected those blue small Hero Factory armor pieces on the ball joint there into the black connector part. Easy enough. And then we can see one of those T-bar pieces that's simply slotting into the hole on the CCBS armor piece. Fair enough. Those are the T-bar pieces you use for minifigure or not minifigure, for like a, adding hands onto a, a bionicle like you would have seen on the set Hydraxon or on myself Mark Cossie or on pretty much any mock because people love those finger designs. Then we've got uh, some one by one system clip pieces with the clip on top. And those just simply clip in there. Then we've got some headlight bricks to clip into that. Then on top of that, we've got those funky uh, tiles that have the interesting curves to them. They kind of look a little bit like toenails. That's on top of that. And then on the opposite side of the headlight brick there, we have got some sort of plate that's just connecting onto the back there. So that one was a little bit more simple in terms of reverse engineering, and depending on your knowledge of system, you still might not quite know what those pieces are. But if you zoom in enough on the pictures, or you just do a little bit of look, either you just do a simple Google of what a headlight brick is, any sort of stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's kind of about that reverse engineering. It's kind of learning more about your knowledge of pieces, like what they look like, what they are, how people are using them, and how you can use them. Uh, and even just that, just simply studying like, oh, okay, that's how that's done. Cool. All right. I understand that now. Hey, if I ever need a cool toe design, I know one now. Yeah, just little simple helpful stuff like that. Sometimes reverse engineering will be easy. Sometimes it'll be hard like the other one. Sometimes you're going to have to work for it, you know? Which is why I'm always hesitant about posting instructions for, for mocks. It's that thing of, I learned so much more through reverse engineering than I do from just simply following instructions. So sometimes... You, you, you almost sometimes need the challenge of actually attempting to figure out like, okay, how the heck can I do this? And you'd actually sit down and, and think about it, overcome the challenge and then learn and grow from it, you know? So uh, do, do some reverse engineering, you'll, uh, you'll grow from it. Anyway, enough of this reverse engineering tangent. I didn't even intend to talk about this this much, but I am. Now it's a longer episode. Oh no. I say oh no. I don't think anyone's upset that it's a longer episode. On to the next mark here. This is a mock by Dry Noodles, and it didn't have a name, but I'm going to call it Weapons for Toa. So he's built two cool mocks here. A lot of them are very heavily using pieces from Pahatu and Liwa. And you know what? That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. They look super cool. Little slide additions, they do a decent enough to it to uh, make it look nice and pretty and add your own little creative license to it. It's cool. But really, nothing beats having some cool guns. It's also super cool to take a look at some of these pictures and realize how much playability there is with these weapons. You know, the fact you can kind of actually cock them and take out and load some ammo into it. And the fact you use the stud shooter pieces, so you could actually even fire them. That's awesome. You know, can you build some guns on your mock that actually fire and have some cool playability to them? That sounds like a really fun idea. And more or less, I'm sure you could reverse engineer some of these guns. We were just joking about that. So uh, maybe you could uh, even build these ones yourself. But I also love that, the idea of how much a weapon can speak for the character here. You know, like I was saying, these are very simple revamps, but they're still super cool. And these these weapons are adding so much more to the character. You know, it's a bit like how Thor's hammer adds so much personality and character and you know, strength and power to him. The weapon really can speak for the character sometimes. But also you can have a lot of personality in a weapon too, or even how a weapon can actually communicate something about the character. You know, like you have a noble knight who has a sword and that sword has a name and it's so connected to them and it, you know it's such a, a legacy of who they are you know like a jedi with a lightsaber for example it's uh, it can convey a lot of their personality a lot of what they do and what they stand for or you have characters like luke skywalker who in return of the jedi he throws his lightsaber to the ground and he says i will not fight you and one of the most jedi things a jedi could have done you know 
And that's communicating so much about a character. And it's just a, you know, a decent enough amount of that is in the weapon. A lot of that's also in his personality as well. But now I'm on another Star Wars tangent. So I still like that. Focus on your weapons. See how you can communicate stuff about character with them. Or do none of that boring stuff and just make a cool gun. For the record, I don't think that stuff's boring. But you might be sitting here and being like, I don't care about communicating personality with my character. I just want to make a pew pew laser. Then make a pew pew laser. It's a great idea. And these mocks have some brilliant pew pew lasers. Good job. The next mock here is Samuel the Archangel of Death by Bethany Mars. So a lot of characters can often fit into very specific tropes. You know, like you've got your, your, your big bad evil guy who's super sinister, wears a cape, has spikes, and is commanding the shadows, and has wings, and it kind of looks like this guy. You know, or you've got your hero who's a, a knight in shining armor, that sort of thing. And sometimes it's fun to just actually play in those tropes. I think this is a mock that certainly does. It really plays on the very typical elements of a bad guy the cape the wings the the spikes the evil mask claws and spikes everywhere it's a it's a fun and you know, relatively straightforward thing to do and there's a lot of different examples that you could take inspiration from whether it's a an evil villain from a disney movie or just your your, your typical villain from a saturday morning cartoon or a, a fun movie that you want to watch you know there's a, there's a lot you can take inspiration from there one of my favorite additions on this mock is just all the different spikes and things on his torso and shoulders there. Really kind of does create this awesome looking, strong, proud, broad shouldered look that makes him look large, menacing and strong as he's kind of puffing out his chest almost. And just the way the spikes sort of flow off of his shoulders is so kind of glorious and massive and over the top. And Again, I feel like that communicates a lot about his personality and that communicates so much. And, you know, the spikes can so easily represent evil and just just the general nature of the spikes kind of forming these pointed lines and flowing up kind of really brings out this sense that he is this sort of egotistical, always focused on himself sort of person. Like, you know, the lines are leading to his head, like... It's also focused on him and how smart he is in his brain and, you know, him, 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 that kind of thing. It's interesting. Little little stuff like that that can can be communicating on a, on a really interesting symbolic level, which maybe you've had your English class, maybe you've finished school for the year and you're like, Ben, I don't need to talk about symbolism. All right, we're going to talk about symbolism. he got spiky things on his shoulders and it looks cool. He's got wings. They're badass. He's got a cape. It's long. It's in charge. And capes are rad, dude. This mock is rad. Nice work. On to the next mock. This is Quinn, Prince of Fire by Snorg. Supreme Leader Snorg. Just Snorg. I added that last bit. So this guy's cool. He's got another awesome looking gun here. So I'm using some funky lift arm pieces and a wheel piece there. Kind of looks a bit like a little ammo thing there. That's pretty nice. I also like the head design here, using those two hand connector pieces there, making that little Nitronian head design, and adding some uh, little pointy bits up the top there, whether it's a minifigure sword or another lift arm there. Kind of looks like an aerial or two of some kind. Kind of gives him this really interesting robotic kind of android looking head. I just, I just like it. It looks, uh, it looks really cool, really fitting. It's also cool as well, taking a look at the arms, seeing that system piece in Trans Orange being used there. It's uh, just a, a cool design there that you can use, just uh, simply attaching it to some uh, axles there and just slotting it in. It's a, a nice way to introduce a little bit more Trans Orange with some system pieces there, if you're maybe running out of some Trans Orange uh, Hero Factory pieces. There's a whole bunch of different translucent system pieces you could always introduce into a mock there, and you know, a bunch of them have ways of easily connecting into CCBS like this, so why not use them? Yeah, a really strong kind of looking frame to this mock, and some really nice poses that he's in here as well. It's communicating a lot of uh, a lot of character for him. Nothing like posing a mock really, really nicely. Uh, it actually does a lot. Super cool. So nice work there. On to the last one. And this last one here is by Lego7, and is called Sir Adric 2.0. So, of course, this is based off the Lego set called Adric, which was a Knight's Kingdom figurine that Lego made not too long ago. And by not too long ago, I mean it was probably actually quite a while ago, probably like eight, ten years ago. It was actually a while ago. But regardless, Knight's Kingdom has some awesome pieces. The majority of the, like, the helmet, the shield, the shoulder pads, the, the, the leg armor pieces there, even the bit on his crotch. Those pieces are Knight's Kingdom armor pieces. They are awesome, brilliant pieces. 
and you can make some phenomenal characters like this that ha look so knight-like. Um, so definitely look into some Knight's Kingdom sets because they have brilliant pieces and this is a brilliant, brilliant mock that uses them. I always love a good axe and of course this set did come with a really cool axe. Maybe we should build some more axes just as a community. That's what we're going to do. We're going to make more axes because we need more axes on mocks. Because I, I don't know, just, just seeing this really big and in charge axe like i was talking about before with how much weapons can communicate about the character here that big old shield with the bull on the front of it this big old axe like i want to see this guy fight he looks like he's not someone you want to mess around with it's super super cool i still love the color blocking on this all the silver on top like it is his armor and then the red on the just underneath that kind of like cloth or some sort of leather tunic, some kind of medieval looking costume. And the way that those Technic Finn panel pieces kind of just uh, come off of uh, uh, his waist there. That's really, really cool. It really looks like uh, something fresh out of Game of Thrones or something cool. Uh, a really, really nice way of using those pieces. It very much looks like a sort of leather tunic or something. It's really perfectly conveyed there. It's very nice. And this is just a really cool mock, but you know what? Every mock in this episode was super cool. I hope you enjoyed the first installment of Abysmus Christmas. I am now going to edit this episode down because it is very long, much longer than intended, but I got on some tangents, and I'm on another one right now. I'll see you next Tuesday for the next installment of Abysmus Christmas, and of course I'll see you Saturday for your regular scheduled Barnacle Inspiration series episode. In the meantime, if you want to submit some of your own mocks to Abysmus Christmas or the Bionicle Inspiration series, of course, you can do so. I actually haven't even recorded the other episodes. I was just going to kind of do one each week so that that way, if you want to submit stuff, it's not like, oh, sorry, I've already recorded them. It can't be in the episode. Like, no, no, you, you still very much stand a chance of being on. You know, the, the intent of doing this is to breeze through a bunch of submissions in a short period of time so that you aren't sitting there going, man, where's my submission? You know, so feel free to submit through the email you're currently seeing on your screen. And while you're in the links uh, in the description there, you can find that uh, email and you can copy and paste it. You can also find links to all the mocks you saw in today's episode and links to my own social media as well. Hope you have a fantastic December. You're getting excited for Christmas because I am too. See you in the next episode. Bye for now.